Hello everyone, this is George Diaz, President and Founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I bring you another episode of Defining Infusionsoft Success. This week my guest is Cody Barlow. He is someone I met a couple weeks ago at uh, Jackie, mm, if I get her name what, McLallahan's, McLallahan. McLallahan's yeah. um, um, speaker's presentation event or speaker's event. And he was one of the presenters, and um, he's actually my roommate as well, so um, I got to know him very well. And um, what he spoke to us about was Facebook ads. And I go, this is a topic we haven't covered on the program, and it's definitely something that, you know, Infusionsoft users, people that are developing websites, people that are marketing themselves online um, should know something about. And so here we have Cody, and he's walking around his office there. So, uh, Sorry. Cody, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Cody Barlow. Uh, I've been doing Facebook advertising and for small businesses for about eight plus years now, but most recently working uh, as a sole proprietor and at Infusionsoft. So, um, just helping people sell more and building funnels to do it. Cool, cool. And then um, him and I were speaking because um, we're, we're building a sales pipeline for ourselves. We actually haven't used Facebook specifically, uh, but as we're right. uh, developing some new lead magnets and offers and sales pipelines, that's probably going to be one of our formulas. So I thought we'd go over it and, um, you know, have him tell us more about how you go about it. When is the right time? When is not the right time to do it? So, uh, Cody, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, as far as the right time and not the right time, I think, in my opinion, I mean with Facebook, just because of the way it's priced compared to other ad networks like Google or um, even now with like Pinterest and some of the other ones, if you're starting out, it's always the right time. Um, and if you have no audience, but even if you have an audience, um, it generally always will work in your favor. To me, it's not so much a question of if it's the wrong time, it's when should you start adding other networks on top of it, on top of what you're doing on, in Facebook to start increasing your results, um, to start getting to different audiences and to start sharing different messages. So, so I guess that would be my opinion on it. So, so is this kind of a, something people should do for list building, um, for selling? You know, wh where, do you, where do you see it fitting into the sequences? For both. I mean, it really... It can, with the way Facebook has set up their ads network, it can be, it can really serve all purposes for, I mean, the magic word right now with Facebook mar uh, advertising is remarketing, being able to retarget people who come to pages. Um, but even just with list building, it's probably the best tool on, on the internet right now as far as cost is concerned, your cost per conversion. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else I would I would use before it. Even even organically, if you just boosted a post on Facebook, your reach is going to be far greater, and it's only going to cost you pennies on the dollar compared to other other places. Okay, so so if I'm already so to start off simple, so let's say I've got mm -hmm. posts, and I mean who doesn't have Facebook posts, right? And, right. and so what I want to do is just get more eyeballs on it. Today, I guess Facebook decides mm -hmm. who sees my stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And Facebook's algorithm changed a while back, their newsfeed algorithm. Just a fancy mathematic formula saying no longer when you post something will everybody in your audience see it. Now it's only maybe 10 to 30 percent will see it when you originally uh, post it. And the reason why is just because Facebook wants to make sure that the good content gets in front of people. Um, I'm sure everybody who uses Facebook sees all the political stuff on it right now. Oh or they see all these things. Oh, yeah. And they, it, it's, it tends to chase people away from the network. And Facebook noticed that. So now they want it to be something where when it's posted, it doesn't, like something like that doesn't go to everybody because they know it's going to chase more people away than keep on the platform. So now, yeah, if you have even just a dollar a day, you can boost a post and reach at least 30 to 40% more of your audience. And oh. if your, your post does well, meaning people are in it, they're liking it, they're sharing it, then when you boost it again the next day for a dollar, you're going to get even more people from your so, audience to see it, and maybe you even get a new audience. So the same post. Yeah, exactly. And, so, and, and, and usually when you set your posting schedule, it's for, you can do it, I think the minimum is three days you have to do it. So the first day you spend a dollar, it will do okay, and then so on and so forth. But yeah, it, it's, it's a great strategy to go with. 
Oh, wow. Okay, so, so I mean, again, for people who aren't, like, totally up on this, <laughs> like, my wife will probably see all of my posts, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we're probably. closely connected. Uh, but, and she uh, interacts with your posts. <laughs> exactly. But, um, I don't know, my... Oh, my, my buddy from college that, you know, we maybe touch base once every couple months, he's less likely to see mine versus his wife's, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's all about what Facebook's, um, part of the reason Facebook is free is because they're gathering data on you constantly. When you go to different websites, especially when you're on their platform, they're looking at that. And the thing they notice is what you're involved with the most. So they measure it by what are you liking? What are you um, spending time on? Um, are you commenting on stuff? So in this case, yeah, so like with your wife, you're probably doing that a lot more than other people, so you're going to see her posts and vice versa if she's commenting on your stuff. And same with your college buddy. He'll see his wife's stuff more because hopefully he's commenting on her stuff and liking it. I mean, there's no way of knowing, of course, but right, right. <laughs> generally whatever you, um, in the words escaping me right now, whatever you're involved with most is where your most activity is, that's what you're going to see. Okay. Okay. So that, that's one type of thing. So, so now let's start talking about Facebook ads. So now it's, I guess I have the sidebar and then I have the ones that are right in the middle of my feed. And those are the ones that, yeah, um, the you know, feed. Trump and Hillary and all my local senators, <laughs> I mean, they're all just dying to get into that space, right? They're trying, but I don't think Facebook is letting most of them. Um, Cause I, I know I haven't even on, uh, people in the audiences that I know they want to target. I haven't seen too many ads um, that are getting through at least. So go figure. Okay, uh, but but that's so. So how do I go about doing that? And and I guess we can get you know sophisticated. We can talk about custom audiences and how you control that. And right. Yeah. So I mean, I guess it depends on how technical we want to get. Um, I mean, with Facebook ads, if you've never set one up before, um, when you log in in the upper right corner of the screen, there's like a little triangle. It's upside down. If you click on that you get this drop-down menu. Um, I can't remember. I think it's next to the little sim world symbol, yeah. this little triangle. And when you click on that, it, on the drop-down menu, it will say create ads. Or right. create. And if you've never created an ad before, you have to start there. Um, if you've boosted a post or if you've run an ad before, you'll have what's called an ads manager, and that should be on the left side of your Facebook screen. Okay. If you just go to both places, they, they have in the ads manager, there's a green button that says create ad. Um, and they walk you through the steps. That's what's nice with Facebook's platform is it's very sequential. They have you start with your campaign, you know, usually your campaign of what, you, what you're trying to do. Like, I'm a political person. Get these people to vote for me. Yeah, you know, and, and, so, and, and so they're targeting probably zip codes, right? So it's like, I, you know, the people that can mm -hmm. vote for me oh, are yeah. the zip code. So they don't want the people across the street from the zip code because those people are probably in another precinct or another district. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can break it down by zip code or you can... I mean, it's, it's really impressive the type of targeting you can do with Facebook advertising. Yeah, and then now, so if I, and let's, let's get away from politics. So if I'm <laughs> um, selling, you know, like in our case, we sell marketing services. So if I wanted to go after a specific target, I could go after, you know, people who like Infusionsoft, or I could, you know, people exactly. who like Frank Kern, or people who like Ryan Dice, mm -hmm. a digital marketer, you know, wh whoever those spaces are, and then try and get my ads in front of those people. But what should I be doing? The main thing you should be doing is figuring out if you're going to run ads in front of those people, figure out what those trigger points are for them or pain points as some might call it. Um, because if you run an ad and, you, and as I see this happen a lot with people, they just assume, oh, I'm going to talk about these benefits and how it's going to help. And you'll sign up here and get this five-minute lead gen strategy. Most of the people you're going to target aren't going to care. Um, because what you're doing with Facebook advertising and advertising of any kind is you're breaking a pattern because nobody ever goes on to um, Facebook to sign up for something or to click on an ad. Right. They just want to go through and see content. They want to get stuff for free. Right, and, and, um, and, and, and you, this is in contrast yeah. with someone that's doing a search in Google and coming up and saying, mm -hmm. how do I do better exactly. Facebook ads? And now they're coming up and you got the ads at the top, but people are overtly mm -hmm. looking for something where these people, it's like, I'm mm -hmm. out there to see, you know, are people complaining about uh, the baseball teams or, you know, whatever, whatever the local thing it is. And, and, and you're kind of, it, it's kind of like a TV commercial. I'm watching TV and I'm stuck watching a commercial. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and even with Google, a lot of times now, because um, I'm AdWords certified myself, you'll, 
you'll target keywords because you're assuming people, if they search something, they're probably going to be looking for your stuff as well. So you'll target something that might be secondary to what their initial search is for. Mm -hmm. um, and Facebook, that's all Facebook is, is kind of that secondary idea. It's getting to them before they really are, they know there's the problem, more than likely. They haven't probably defined it yet. Um, and you have a solution for them. So, and that's for a cold audience. But again, going back to what we referenced earlier, you also have custom audiences. This can be people who have heard of you before, and you would share a completely different message to them. Um, but yeah, when you're when you're targeting people like Ryan Dice, Frank Kern, Infusionsoft users, whatever it is, you have to make sure your messaging is is correct and something that's going to, when it breaks that pattern, they're going to want to take action on it. The majority of them. Right, and then do do I keep them in Facebook or do I bring them to my page or you know do I do I want to leave Facebook? Is that you know what's your thoughts on that? Right, so there's a couple different schools of thought. My personal opinion is I like to take them away from Facebook because if I'm paying Facebook money to get them to click on something, I don't want to keep them on the platform where all the noise is, where all this distraction is and messages popping up and all these other things. I want them to, I want to have their undivided attention. So in, in most cases, it costs a little bit more per click, if you will, to get them away from Facebook, but it ends up being more worth it conversion-wise um, in the end. So, yeah. so, so now and, you're talking and literally the difference. Yeah, and, and now you're talking about a traditional, you know, lead pages or click funnels. I mean, a page mm -hmm. that's basically opting them into something. Exactly. Yeah, it could be a it could be a landing page. It could be even just a video page. Um, a popular strategy now is sending people to a blog post, and you have your Facebook pixel, a tracking pixel, on that blog post, and then just creating an ad to retarget everybody who just went and read that blog uh, post. Because okay. you know they're already interested in, in what you have because they clicked on it to read the blog post. Now you follow up with something that's an offer of some kind. Right, right. So, so you know, for those of you who don't know what the pixeling is, if, if, I, go, if, if I can get right. you to come to my blog page, I can pixel you, and then now the mm -hmm. ads chase you, right? Exactly. Just think of a pixel almost like a GPS. You know, our phones now, each phone has GPS in it. If I go around someone, if I get lost, they could open up kind of the GPS finder and find my phone and hopefully find me with it too if I got lost. And yeah. that's kind of how the Facebook pixel works. They track to see, um, but it takes it even a step further. They also track the activity too. Um, I can track people who come to my page and spend time on it. They're actually reading through. They're looking at it. That would be a lead. So, so I can target um, someone who spent a specific, like more than two minutes reading my page? Not by the minutes per se, but you can target it by, that's what a lead um, is. And you have these specific events that you can track. There's like page views to so someone who just comes to the page and looks at it. Lead, which wow. is someone who spends more time on the page or actually puts their information in. And they have, I think they have 10 events is what they call them or eight, wow. I have to remember. Um, I only use like three or four of them. But yeah, they have everything from like add to wish list to if they search for something on your site. Nice. Um, yeah, all sorts of stuff like that. And you can create custom conversions, too, you want to track. But generally, yeah, you can track people by their interest level and what they're looking at and things like that. Right. And then, and then if, 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 I, if I'm using custom audience specifically, once I got them, I can pull them out so that I'm not wasting my money on people whose name I already have and I can email. Or I can keep them in because I want to du double hit them, right? Yeah, that's right. So, um, okay, so I guess there's a lot of different options that people can use. Um, I mean, are there like specific interesting campaigns that you're doing that you can share with us? Um, the main one that I'm going to be doing, actually, we're going to be launching this week is we're running a campaign for a, um, it's called Social Media IQ, and the, and the goal of the, the product is to help uh, parents ensure that their children are safer on social media from like predators and also nice. from you know making in this case there's been a lot of there are a lot of children and kids and teenagers now who are making kind of life altering mistakes on social media posting things that they shouldn't and it gets reposted and people see it and it's too late so the campaign we're going to run is just going to be a simple image of kind of like a almost stalker stalkerish type of an image where it shows the phone and it says you know, we'll just say Johnny's found in the background. Johnny's been found near you, and then in the background will be kind of like a uh, hazed out uh, child. And, of course, it's going to insinuate to people that 
this is someone who shouldn't be knowing that the child is there. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, the, the headline is going to say, you know, the three, learn the three ways to protect your children on social media, and we'll go into that more in depth, and then we send them and we're taking them to a webinar. Um, so we haven't started that yet just because we're still working on all the content to follow up, so, which is so, in many, many ways just as important as the ad itself, but anyways. Yeah, no, no, I mean, and, and as a marketer, I mean, you're, you're playing on fear, you know, fear, doubt, and uncertainty are usually the biggest motivators, mm -hmm. and so, it, oh, you yeah. know. Um, kind of raising the antenna in a parent's mind of what their kid might be doing on social media and how do you keep them safe. So so you're exactly. doing a lot of the traditional stuff that people would do when you're marketing online. Yeah, and, and I know like these days everybody wants to come out with some new strategy or something that is like, oh, this is the best way to get more conversions, blah, blah, blah. Um, but what's crazy about it is when all is said and done, um, it really – just the, the classics work, yeah, working on fear, working on a gain of pleasure, um, you know, things like that. It, it really, people always try to overcomplicate how they do the ad, and it comes back to what I was saying about messaging, you know, know your audience, what's going to stand out to them, and what would drive them to take action. I mean, the, the image I just discussed, any parent in their right mind is going to look at that and say, yeah, that makes sense, that could possibly be my child, and then we're going to hit it home with, Here's three actionable steps that you can take and how you can learn it. Right, and, and for you it's super easy because, I mean, you just got to look at people in a certain age group, right, who maybe like specific topics, you know, soccer moms to, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure it's super easy to find those parents in, in Facebook. Yeah, exactly, and in this case it's, it's going to be the targeting is going to be based around what I like to do in the beginning if I'm starting with cold traffic, so... We don't have any idea really of who's going to buy yet. We know it's going to be parents, that's for sure. Probably in a certain age range, but I like to start with a bigger audience. Um, bigger being anywhere from 150 to 1,000 to a million people in this audience, and I'll run ads at them. Um, and then after about a week or two, I get the data back that Facebook was tracking from my ads, and then I can start to target more succinctly, and I can be more direct. Yeah, but based on the data, so you're learning as you go, right? Exactly. Yeah, because Facebook, I mean, their algorithm is so powerful. I mean, people try so hard in the beginning to really micro-target down. And I always tell them, well, I mean, Facebook ads are investments. They're not, you're not going to pay money and just all of a sudden hit a home run right away unless you upload an email list. That's really the only way to do it. And even then, it's not guaranteed. And so um, with email lists, you're, so, you're talking about matching up a, a, an email list with a custom audience, and then you're kind of double-targeting mm -hmm. them. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So in this case, it, it really comes down to um, you have to look at Facebook as kind of a not, so, not long-term in the sense of it's going to take months and months. It might, but really in the beginning, you want to cast a bigger net, let Facebook's net then bring it down to the, the group of fish that are going to more than likely bite the most, and then that's where you run your ads to. Cool. Cool. Well, Cody, thank you so much for, um, for sharing some time with me. Um, Hey, if uh, yeah, people want to reach you, because um, I'm sure some people are going to be interested in Facebook ads, uh, how can they find you? So the easiest way to find me, um, you can find me on Facebook, just the Cody Barlow. There's a good number of us. It's just a picture of me and my son in the picture. Um, we're both kind of smiling, so that's one way. And then I have a website. Um, I'll try to, hopefully it won't slur this too bad. It's FB, as in Facebook, so FB ads, A-D-S, gold, dot info. Okay, so and, and that, adds gold info. Yeah, not a problem. When we publish this, I'll make sure to, to put the link in there so people don't have to like memorize it, awesome. and that way they can reach you. Right. Yeah, and that's just a landing page. In fact, on that landing page, I talk about the slides that I actually used in the talk I gave um, two weeks ago where, where oh, you and I were um, staying together, Georgia. And yeah, that, that's something people can get, and through that, they can set up a consultation with me, just a 30-minute one where we can chat some more. So. Great. Great. Well, hey, thank you so much for breaking time out of your schedule to, to meet with me. And, um, you know, we'll stay in touch. Of course. Sounds great to me. Okay. Take care. You too.